Uh, as far as uh, the, the current ecosystem is concerned within the crypto space uh, as well as blockchain in, uh, in general, um, what are the kind of products that we're looking at? Uh, you know, at, at this stage, uh, we, we have what we understand as basic trading of, of the currencies. But other than that, what else uh, can the industry offer to, to investors, which can probably also pass the RBI's uh, you know, test of, of, of it being safe for investors? So, you know, if you look at the global crypto uh, ecosystem, um, the underlying, what are these cryptocurrencies? Why are there like, you know, maybe 500, 1,000 or 5,000 cryptocurrencies? Is because the entire crypto ecosystem is right now in the infrastructure building space. Mm. Uh, when I say it's in the infrastructure stage, uh, today when you type, you know, uh, HTTP colon slash slash and some dot com, uh, there's a set of servers around the world where your request goes to and then you get a response. Now, in the crypto space, there are a lot of these infrastructures which are still not built out. Mm. And the beauty of crypto is that for accessing this infrastructure, you can charge users mm. in form of those cryptocurrencies. Okay. So all of these cryptos are saying we are building different kinds of infrastructure for a future which will be decentralized, mm. where no one entity will own any of these uh, protocols. Sure. But these protocols have to run on their own without a central entity. And they will be powered by these cryptocurrencies that we own. So all of these cryptocurrencies have different use cases in terms of, that, like there are some cryptocurrencies that help you uh, write smart contracts, which can uh, probably you know run some code on the internet mm -hmm. without any servers on some centralized uh, sure. system. Okay. And to run these, you need cryptocurrencies. So everyone is today saying that we are building the global infrastructure for in the decentralized world, and you can be involved by purchasing these cryptocurrencies sure. because these are limited in number, right. and you will be the early movers in this space. Right. So tomorrow when, let's say, uh, 500 million people start using, your early tokens would be worth much more because they would also need it. Right. So this is how it's all happening. In terms of use cases, there are uh, there are a lot of games being built which don't have to have like a centralized owner. It's decentralized, which means the ones who build the game can actually stop working on it, doesn't have to spend any money, can go and relax, but the game would still be operational, still be played by someone because it's in a decentralized system. Mm. So the whole ethos is, I'm pretty sure a lot of us must have, you know, you love some product online. You use it, but it's maybe only 100 people use it. The owner decides this is not worth it. He shuts that product, then you have to f search an alternative. Sure. In the decentralized world, once you build a code and you put it out, you don't need to work on it anymore. Mm. Only five people like it and they want to access it. They can access it any time of the day forever. Okay. So this is like the biggest difference in the decentralized versus centralized world. And this is where cryptos come into picture.